let's queer up the world view. Cuba of the past sent gay people to labor camps, and today there is LGBTQ plus inclusive church. All right, so a bit of good news. In the historic port city of Matanzas, the Reverend Elaine Saralegi proudly presides over an LGBTQ plus inclusive church adorned in a rainbow colored clergy stole. Saralegi welcomes same sex couples and offers a sanctuary where all are embraced without exclusion. This scene stands in stark contrast to Cuba's past, where after the 1959 revolution led by Fidel Castro, gay individuals were systematically repressed, and many were sent to labor camps. However, in recent years, the communist-run island has made significant strides towards LGBTQ plus equality. I remember the Mariel Boatlift, the information about how many gay people they sent here to Miami. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> Legislation enacted in 2022, including a government-backed family law, has granted same-sex couples the right to marry and adopt. It highlights a monumental shift in societal acceptance. Yet this progress has not been without resistance. The Catholic Church and evangelical groups oppose these measures. Well, there's nothing new there. Invoking religious rhetoric to challenge LGBTQ plus rights. Despite this opposition, though, the government's campaign for equality prevailed, garnering overwhelming support from voters. President Miguel Diaz-Canel hailed the passage of the law as a triumph of love. Meanwhile, Mariela Castro, a prominent advocate for LGBTQ plus rights and daughter of former President Raul Castro, has expressed profound joy at the progress made. As Cuba continues to navigate its path toward progress and equality, the emergence of LGBTQ plus inclusive spaces like Sarah Ligi's church serves as a beacon of hope on the island. And a beacon of hope sometimes is all we need. I couldn't help but contrast this to the Trevor Project's statistics. Cuba's a small island and people live close together. Here in the United States, sometimes I feel our progress is delayed by the fact that we have such a vast, you know, uh, just th- there's so much land out there. Mm-hmm. People, you have an LGBTQ plus person who may be the only one for 200 square miles. Right. Right. And it's a little tougher for this kind of progress to happen in those types of areas in the United States. Congratulations, Cuba. Yeah, I mean, we're not being sent to labor camps yet. <laughs> but and the systematic that oppression. That happened the year I was born. Oh God! And the systematic oppression is in the early stages here, but even in Cuba, we're significant strides towards LGBTQ plus uh, equality are being made. There is proof change is possible. Yeah, Rachel, you're a, a tourism LGBT tourism expert. What do you think about when you you hear a, a news like this of what's going on on the island? Um, Well, as a travel person, that's all about inclusive tourism and knows that there are certain places people won't travel when they don't feel included to be there. I think this definitely is is good from a tourism perspective, for sure. I'm also curious to know how much their their closest to places like... um, uh, you know, Puerto Rico and the different islands around, you know, around that region, how much that might impact because destinations like a Puerto Rico are very inclusive. Um, so that's always interesting to me whether that has impacted, you know, and, and in yeah. Florida, you get a lot of people that are moving up from Puerto Rico, moving up from Cuba, like people from Cuba, it's true. depending on what part of Florida you're in. And um, I, it's interesting to see the different acceptance among the cultures um, whereas in, in certain destinations in Florida where a lot of Cubans live, it tends to go a little bit more right leaning mm-hmm. or uh, you know republican leaning and then where you have puerto ricans it tends to be a little bit more left but i wonder if that influence is starting to overlap a little bit mm-hmm. you know it's uh it's interesting to me and in, in 2024 at queer news tonight uh, we have reported on what's going on in africa and mm-hmm. nigeria and uganda mm-hmm. um uh, have invoked death penalty uh, law yes. uh, yemen is going to crucify mm-hmm. 12 uh, people who um, um, uh, are gay, and uh, and they're either going to be stoned or crucified, and and it's an ongoing uh, story. Um, you contrast that of what we've watched over the last couple of years in Cuba, and it's a dramatically different yeah. world. As somebody who has been to Cuba, 
more than a dozen times. I've been to Havana Pride. Mariela Castro's organization runs uh, Havana Pride. Cuba is a very interesting place. The idea that um, a, le uh, a lesbian pastor could have a church mm. in Matanzas uh, 10 years ago was an impossible, it was an impossible concept. And in 10 years, they've been able to make this, uh, this uh, progress. Mm. One of the things I also think is very interesting is for the Cuba haters, of which there are many listening to me right now, uh, uh, they hate Cuba because they hate the Castros and the government. And, and I completely understand and I completely understand. But you can't hate the Cuban people. And at the end of the day, Cuba has made such dramatic pro progress this story will be rejected by large swaths of people in South Florida because they want no good news right. coming out of Cuba at all. Well, I'm sorry. In LGBT, we got lots of good news going on in Cuba, and, and we're happy to report uh, that, uh, that story. We can't mix the politics and uh, the civil and human rights of its people uh, unconditionally, and in LGBT, things have improved over the last number of years. I, I think, you know, if, if Cuba is paying attention to what's happening in Florida, too, we're all understanding that when you make these anti-LGBTQ laws, it, you know, going back to the tourism perspective, you lose tourists and not just tourists. You lose groups. You lose groups of people traveling, which is lots and lots and lots of money. I mean, South Florida, sadly, has been hurt by this quite a bit this past year. So I'm hoping, or last year or two, I'm hoping that some of these islands might just let Florida set the example of what not to do with laws. Uh, that, yeah. <laughs> and that comes from an yes. LGBT <laughs> Don't Focus do. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay.